Welcome to Input Validation. This is the first of a series of courses designed to make developers aware of common security flaws. I am Josh Bressers, a member of the Red Hat product security team. The focus of this course is input validation and the mistakes that many programmers make when dealing with externally supplied input. Our next topic discusses SQL or SQL injection, an input validation flaw that many developers face when interacting with databases. What is SQL injection exactly? Similar to cross-site scripting, where we injected HTML meta characters, in SQL injection, we modify a SQL query by injecting SQL meta characters. By leveraging SQL injection flaws, attackers can affect SQL query results, gain access to, and potentially modify sensitive data stored in a database. One common example of this attack is when checking user password credentials against a database. Exploiting a SQL injection flaw an attacker can modify the query to return the needed information to bypass the authentication check. How do we identify and protect ourselves from accidentally coding a SQL injection flaw? The key is to know the SQL meta characters. When making any sort of SQL query, be aware of input that may contain any of these meta characters. Single quote or double quotes that are used to delimit literal values, semicolon, which marks the end of a SQL query statement, inline comments similar to those used in C and C++ with the slash star, and a remainder of line comments, which in SQL is represented using the dash dash sequence. Here's a classic XKCD comic that highlights SQL injection attacks. You can see a number of SQL meta characters being used by Little Bobby Tables, resulting in the deletion of the entire table of student data. Thankfully, there are two very good solutions to preventing SQL injection attacks. Both use the same concept of separating the variable input data from the SQL query structure similar to printf and C. The first option is to use prepared statements, which are sometimes called parameterized queries. Prepared statement APIs are provided by most SQL libraries. The other option is stored procedures. While prepared statements are performed by the code making the SQL call, Stored procedures are defined and stored in the actual SQL database and can be accessed via SQL queries. The final set of input validation flaws looks at command and code injection. These two flaw types pose the most risk to an application as an attacker can exploit them to pretty much do as they please. First off, we'll examine command injection flaws. Command injection is always a risk when executing shell commands. The injection occurs when commands or command arguments are passed to the operating system for evaluation. Attackers can leverage command line meta characters such as the semicolon to end statements or hyphens to include additional arguments. However, operating system shell environments are not the only environments at risk. Many programming languages have ways of handing off commands to the operating system for runtime execution. Shells such as SH, Bash, and ZSH have the exec and eval functions. C and C++ use a system function. Java, PHP, Python, Perl, and most likely your favorite language has our own ways of performing command execution. Let's look at a command injection example written in C. We see that a developer is trying to write a simple program to echo the first argument back to the screen. He's aware of command injection flaws and is cautious to make sure the argument is quoted when passed to echo via the system function. Besides the obvious buffer overflow stemming from the dangerous string use, an attacker can still make use of shell command meta characters to cause harm. For example, they can pass a string with a double quote, which closes the argument quoting, a semicolon, ending the echo statement, and then any command they desire. Now the attacker just finishes off the command with an ending hash sign to comment out the remaining double quote. Code injection flaws are very similar to command injection. However, instead of passing arguments to the operating system for execution, we are evaluating code within the constraints of the language. As you can imagine, this is more of an issue when dealing with interpreted languages such as Perl, Python, or JavaScript. Code can be injected into compiled languages such as C, however this involves leveraging another security flaw such as a buffer overflow and injecting assembly instructions. Some protection can be provided by sandboxing the running application to prevent the attacker from performing certain actions, such as accessing local files. Lucky for us, it's easy to find where code injection flaws may occur. Just look for use of the eval function. 
Pretty much every language uses eval to dynamically evaluate the past parameters within the context of the language interpreter. Here's an example of a code injection flaw found in the Blender rendering engine. When importing a crafted Blender KML file with KMZ import with mesh.py, an attacker can use a crafted color tag value to execute arbitrary Python code. The last eval in the color array grabs all of the color values beyond the sixth character. An attacker could put a valid hex value, followed by the semicolon, Python end of statement meta character, followed by any block of Python code. The hex code is then evaluated along with all of the injected Python code. A simple input is shown to demonstrate that this code injection security flaw is exploitable. The general advice for preventing command and code execution is, do not use vulnerable functions. Functions that cause command and code execution, such as eval, exec, and, and others, are not necessary in most languages, as there are safer alternatives for most every case for using eval and exec. If you absolutely must use functions vulnerable to command or code injection, filter input by scrubbing meta characters and sandbox your program's execution. This concludes the input validation course. We encourage you to try the other common security flaws training courses. Thank you for listening.